Hey there, Doc. Dr. Scott Doherty from Cower Launch coming to you today from, can you guess? That's right, that's the St. Louis Arch behind me. Uh, I had every intention of doing a video down there by the arch, but it is completely under construction, so I figured I might as well take advantage of this uh, beautiful view from my hotel room. I know the lighting's terrible, but uh, looking at the window, that's just the way it works, but again, felt like I had to take advantage of this. Uh, anyways, Last few videos I've been talking to you about uh, how to fix your practice if it's struggling. Uh, and I've been talking about the internal factors a lot. Uh, your systems, your staff, yourself. Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the external factors that could cause a downturn in your practice. Um, if, if your practice is struggling or if it's in a downturn, there's always a reason. And if it's not internal, if it's not something you can find inside your practice, your systems, or yourself, or your own attitude, or your staff's attitude, then it has to be one of the external factors. Um, today, I just want to kind of list the factors to make you aware of them. Uh, I'll give you a couple tips on how to uh, deal with those external factors, uh, and then we can dig in deep a little bit later. But I uh, made a little list here just so I didn't forget any of them. One of the big factors, these there's 10 of them that we've come up with in Cairo Launch, uh, what we call the Big Ten uh, external practice uh, problems. One of them would be economics. Uh, that could be ob obviously problems with your local, regional, or even a national economy. Um, something, you know, a layoff at a local plant in your area. You know, a big business goes out of, uh, leaves your area, takes all their employees with them. Uh, those things could definitely affect uh, the way a practice grows or doesn't grow. Uh, deterioration of patient uh, insurance benefits. Uh, a lot of insurance companies these days are switching to capitated plans. Um, you know, even if it's not an HMO, they're just doing it to you. Um, so, if you have a big company that you're working with that has great insurance and all of a sudden they change their insurance, that obviously has an effect. Uh, increased competition. You know, there's more practices coming into a very finite area. And those, those young whippersnapper doctors are uh, marketing to your patients uh, and, and sometimes even creating some sort of a pricing competition as well. Deductible restarts. That's a big one. I hear it every year. Uh, doctors are always telling me that, uh, you know, they're going to have a slow January and, you know, I'll, I'll address that mindset here in a second, but um, deductible restarts are a real thing, but obviously you need to be prepared for them. And, and when that time comes that everybody's you know getting a lot of care in December, and then they don't want any care in January or February, things that you need to deal with. Uh, holiday season slowdown, everything from people um, you know going Christmas shopping to the fact that they're spending their money on other things other than in your office. Um, you know, and patients are just too busy to make their appointments during that time. Income tax time, uh, another one of the big ones that some people are holding on to their money uh, to, to cover any shortfall of that income taxes. Um, and they're just waiting that last minute, like, you know, as if they're turning in a term paper. Um, school starting over, this is a big one that just uh, kind of came up here. I heard it from my clients that, you know, I, we've been slow the last couple of weeks, and I think, well, I should say, I've heard it from, I heard it from half my clients. Um, you know, we've been slow the last couple of weeks. I think it's just because school's starting over, and there's definitely uh, an issue there. That usually lasts about two weeks. Uh, but, uh, again, I heard from a lot of my other clients that were, were in a different situation that they didn't notice any difference at all. Uh, so it really kind of depends on where you're at is how much you notice that one. But it can be a big one. And I hate to give credit to any of these things. I would like to say everything depends on us. Uh, and it definitely does. We definitely have control of it. But all these things can affect you. Uh, you have to learn how to adapt to them. Uh, weather disruptions, storms, floods, hurricanes, uh, El Nino, whatever it might be, um, those tend not to be a localized event. Um, I mean, they tend to be more localized. They're not necessarily a national event, obviously. If, uh, if there's a hurricane in one area, it doesn't mean the uh, you know, other parts of the country are, are affected with it. But then there are also national events or disasters, um, terrorism, stock market tra crash. I'm actually making this video today is September 11th. Um, um, so obviously that's uh, one of the big ones in our area and that affected people uh, back in 2001 quite a bit. Um, so, but those are, the, those are the big 10. That's the list of things that can affect your practice from the outside. Uh, and as I was kind of said, saying earlier, uh, I hear people tell me about deductible season or whatever it might be. Doctors who wake up every morning uh, expecting for something to happen for them to have a downturn in their practice are very seldom disappointed. Those things usually come about. Uh, if you're looking for them and paying attention to them and you're, you're afraid of them, uh, most often they'll have a huge impact on your practice. The way for them, the big secret of how to not have them have a big effect on your practice, I also mentioned earlier, 
I mentioned with school restarting, you know, half my clients were worried about it and, and noticing it, and the other half weren't. The other half that weren't were my practices that are, are in what I would consider an overbuilt uh, situation, a, a capacity situation. Meaning, they're so busy that when something does happen, when school restart does happen, and 20% of their patients don't show up for their, for their appointment, there are more patients wanting to get in that do show up. And so they don't even notice. It's a small blip on the radar. Uh, and again, that's a situation where they're in uh, a high demand situation, which is what you need to create. That is the big secret. You've got to get in your practice in an overbuilt, high demand, um, capacity-based situation that when you have any of these 10 things hit your practice, you don't even notice it because there are more people trying to get in than you than um, you know you can handle. And a lot of docs are like, you know, how do we create that? It's actually easier than you would think. Uh, but that is what you have to focus on is getting your practice. Uh, there's two schools of thought with these dips. And I've seen a lot of stats uh, over my, my years of practice building as well as consulting. Uh, and I notice these dips at certain times of the years and I can look at them seasonally and I can look at them, you know, depending on where you live, um, you know, what kind of town you're in, what rural versus a big city and you can kind of just see these patterns develop um, whether you're in an overbuilt situation or whether you're not and kind of see how it affects each one of them but the key is there's two schools of thought when you see those dips one of them would be to market through the dip meaning as you're having a little valley let's say you do have a, a very seasonal practice um, and during two months of the year your practice really takes a nosedive the two schools of thought, one would be that you'd market heavily during that nosedive. Now, you know it's coming, so you just do more marketing there and then try to keep it even. The other school of thought, which is the one that I follow, is just overbuild your practice when it's already busy. Take a time that's busy and find a way to see more people during that time, and then your dip won't be as, your value won't be quite as low. Um, I'd rather take advantage of, you know, peak capacity times, but also peak seasons really find a way to see more people in that time, build your practice during that time, and you'll take a big dip. So I gave you more of the secret than I thought I was going to, but um, definitely look at those 10 things. See how they're affecting your practice. Realize that some of them you just can't, you, there's not a whole bunch you can do about the external things. If the insurance changes or uh, there's a national disaster, there's not much you can do about that. But what you can take care of is what happens inside your practice. So the way to deal with the external um, threats is to strengthen yourself, make yourself more bulletproof. So take that tip, look at those 10 things, see which of them are affecting your practice, and then uh, look at what you can do internally to make sure that they don't affect you as much. Uh, enjoy the tip. Hope you have a, a great rest of the year here, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Hey, Doc, before you go, uh, I know I've mentioned on my last few videos as I've been traveling around in uh, Lake Tahoe and South Bend and uh, Birmingham, Alabama, uh, that I'm... I'm putting together a um, course on how to fix your struggling practice, trying to teach you how to fix all the things both internally and externally with your practice. Um, and we finally finished that course. So it's all ready to go and we're just starting offering it out there and I'm very excited about it. And this course was designed, uh, as you probably know, I travel around all, all the country doing practice evaluations. And when I evaluate a practice and write up an action plan, a lot of my clients uh, then want to work with me afterwards. Um, some of them, though, are just not in a position. They're struggling and they can't afford to do my on-site practices or the, the, the high-end stuff that I do. And I've always wanted to find a way to help them. So this course was designed specifically for that reason. Uh, now I'm opening it up into the, to the entire chiropractic community. Um, so if your practice is in a struggling place where you just can't seem to get the momentum that you want to, this course is going to be perfect for you. Um, it's going to be seven six modules, excuse me, this course is six modules um, that will be released week by week and then we'll also have uh, group phone calls. So you'll get a video module, you get to study up, there'll be some resources available to you as well and then uh, once a week we'll get on the phone, um, you'll be able to ask any questions about your particular situation. Again, the course is designed to walk you through all the things that could possibly happen to cause your practice to struggle. Uh, but you also have opportunities to ask about your particular situation and see how we can handle your particular struggles, uh, the things that you're dealing with. So it's going to be a really fun course. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. There should be a link somewhere on this page uh, down below. Definitely click it. Go check out. Get some more details about the course. I'd love to see you in it. If your practice is struggling, 
that makes me sad. Uh, we have such a wonderful profession, uh, and there shouldn't be any struggling chiropractors out there. There's so many people who need and want our services uh, that I want your practice to, to really be successful. So click the link, go check that out, and uh, I'll look forward to working with you.